One of my favorite things about gemstones is how they're basically chemistry confetti. So many different elements can combine in so many different ways, and sometimes the end result is a sparkling dynamic gemstone, which can be found in basically every color and hue under the sun. Let's take it all the way back to elementary school science class. Do you remember the three main rock classifications? Igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Igneous rocks crystallize from magma. Sedimentary rocks are formed from the weathered down bits of other rocks, squeezed and glued together. And metamorphic rock morphs, thanks to pressure and temperature, and changes from one kind of mineral to another. Let's start at the semi-beginning, burning hot magma. Liquid hot magma. The magma comes from deep within the earth, and because this is science, that means we're also going deeper into the ways that magma can harden into gems. There's magma crystallization, gas crystallization, and pegmatites. Pegmatites are the most complex type of igneous rock. They form some enormous crystals. Some individual crystals can grow large larger than a car. The reason they tend to have so many gems in them is because they are made up of the chemical leftovers, things that don't otherwise crystallize well, like rare earth elements or REEs. Minerals in pegmatites commonly contain elements like beryllium, lithium, manganese, cesium, and boron. Magma crystallization is what it sounds like. Magma crystallizes to form minerals. What kind of mineral you get is a lot like baking. Do you know? The muffin man. It all depends on the ingredients, how long you cook it, and how much pressure it's under. Some gems formed this way are ruby, sapphire, moonstone, and zircon. Hydrothermal liquids are created when water and heat interact with magma deep inside the earth. These liquids contain water, carbon dioxide, special elements like fluorine and beryllium, and volatiles, substances that are readily vaporized. Hydrothermal liquids may dissolve minerals or combine with groundwater as they solidify and form new mineral veins. They can also chemically alter, let's say cook, pre-existing minerals. If combined with the right temperature, pressure, time, and space, we can find amethyst, topaz, and emerald. Pegmatites, remember those from a minute ago? They are essentially the last stages of magma crystallization. What's really bizarre about pegmatites is that textbook Igneous Rock 101 teaches us that large crystals form when they have lots of time to grow. When magma in the upper part of the mantle becomes concentrated with volatiles, it cools into a cavity. As the molten rock begins to solidify, the elements begin to crystallize into gems, including topaz, tourmaline, and aquamarine. All that was just rock talk. We haven't even mentioned that the environment can change everything. Some gems crystallize in the mantle where it's very, very, very hot and under extreme amounts of pressure. This is where we'd find formations of gems that thrive in high heat and pressure like diamond and peridot. And as for the oldest gemstone in the world, this little guy, a zircon 0.0157 inches long, holds the title. It was found near Perth, Australia and is estimated to be 4.4 billion years old. Is the oldest gem you know your granny? Reminisce about the olden days when the earth was covered in liquid hot magma down in the comments. While you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on the science and culture of gemstones, check out the links below. Thanks for watching.